Hey everybody, it's your boy Captain Hunter. Thank you so much for tuning in to the show. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Make sure that you do me a favor, hit that rate, subscribe, and share button. Hit the thumbs up, the share, and hit that subscribe button. Let's make it do what it gotta do. Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. Um, appreciate the love that I've been getting. I know that people love the story. Um, and this woman is making people <laughs> a lot of money on YouTube. I mean, she is making people a lot of money. I guess she's got to share the love that she's gotten with that $300, $300,000 um, salary that she's getting. So let's take a look at what's going on. There's a couple of different stories, a couple of different magazines. Somebody told me to make sure I, I, I log into uh, the um, Chicago um, newspapers and all that. So I just kind of Googled around and found some stories. So we're going to talk about it. I have not read through these stories yet. We're going to talk about it. Um, so let's get into it. I also might do a video about a Harvey Weinstein is overturning, but let's get into it. <clears throat> uh, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard vetoes hiring a former Chicago mayor, Lori Lightfoot. Surprise, surprise, she doesn't want anyone, or at least Lori Lightfoot, looking into what she's got going on. This, I, listen, I give this woman, you know, you don't know what's what she's dealing with when she goes home and, you know, whether she's crying on her pillow at night or what. But certainly, she's putting up a fantastic front before the people. So, I give her I give her credit and kudos for that. Uh, so, let's take a look at the story here. Dalton Mayor Tiffany Hed Henyard vetoed action by trustees to hire former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot to conduct a probe into the mayor and village finances during raucous village board meeting Monday. It was yesterday. How dare you think you could come into someone else's town and do work, Henyard said, saying trustees who voted to hire Lori Lightfoot on April 8th, eating overstepped their authority. There is a right way to do things, and this is just not that, Henry said in delivering her veto. It was the village board meeting since, it was the first village board meeting since federal uh, investigators twice served subpoena at the village hall. The most recent delivery seeking documents targeting Henyard and village administrator Keith Freeman, who was under indictment for an bankruptcy fraud. Several residents were locked out. Can you guys read this? Let me make sure this is big enough. Several residents were locked out of the village hall due to lack of seats, and many of them chanted, Hey, hey, ho, ho, Tiffany has got to go. Pretty funny. As they beat drums and drums and pots and pans outside the building. The meeting at one point devolved into a shouting and finger pointing match between Henyard and trustee Kiana Belcher with some residents getting up in their up from the chairs to shout down shout their own comments the meeting didn't get underway until more than 30 minutes after it was scheduled start time and those entering village hall walked through metal detectors under the watchful eye of uniformed police I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the police in, in a little bit here barricades had been set up blocking traffic or or for a block in front of the village hall which itself was rigged ringed with plastic orange barrels tied together with yellow rope from the rope from the rope hung signs that read restricted do not enter sub residents called for henry to step down you're not acceptable you don't respect the people who don't agree with you and you're not qualified for that seat one woman said we are watching the, the fall of this administration said edward steve a former Dalton resident. We want better in our community, Steve said. We, we got to get her out. Another woman said residents who want to see change need to register to vote and organize ahead of next year's municipal elections. It's going to take God, <laughs> really? It's going to take votes and it's going to take all of us coming together, she said. Dalton has seen a flurry of lawsuits recently from, from business owners who have seen the village stall them on approving license renewals and some employees who allege they were fired by Henyard and her administration in retaliation for opposing her. And now ex Dalton employee recently filed a federal lawsuit naming Henyard the village, Thornton Township and the village official that accuses the village official of performing non-sexual sex with the employee after she had blacked out during a May 2023 trip to Las Vegas led by the mayor. As about a hundred or so people crowd into the village hall doors waiting to be let inside the woman was ushered in the front to cheers applause and shouts we love you this is overwhelming she told the crowd and it was 
and hit. At first, it was just me by myself. This means very much to me. Four trustees who are at odds with Henyard voted on April 8th to hire Lightfoot for $400 an hour to conduct their own investigation in there, including the Las Vegas trip that was for, purportedly for economic development purposes. Purportedly. <laughs> the new federal subpoena delivered recently to Dalton Village seeks detailed records about trips made by the village officials and expenses they were reimbursed for, as well as payments made to Henyard and Freeman, according to the document. The new subpoena asked for payment dis disbursement information from the village, including expense reimbursements and credit card expenditures to Henyard Freeman, as well as businesses operated or controlled by Freeman, Keith Freeman, LLC, and governing government staffing advisors, according to the document. Freeman, an Orland, Orland Park uh, resident, also works as a manager with Thornton Township, where Henyard is supervisor. He was indicted on the charge of bankruptcy fraud last month and pleaded not guilty during an April 24th hearing, according to court filing. He's due back in court June 5th. Records of trips taken by the village officials being requested, including expense reports, credit card receipts, according to the recent subpoena. Trips include visits in October 22nd to Springfield in March 2023 to Washington, D.C. And, and Vegas in May. An earlier subpoena focused on Freeman seeking in any Dalton records pertaining to business entity owned or operated by Freeman, including Keith Freeman LLC and government staffing advisors. That subpoena also seeks any village held records concerning other Freeman interests, including collab leaders, collab equity crowdfunding, Freeman Ventures, and two heirs to Evan, according to the document. Do I need to read all this? Probably not. Henyard, at one point in the meeting, turned to Michael Delgado, fund, founding attorney for the Berwyn firm, to thank him for and his firm for service. I appreciate everything you've done for our village, he said. On April 24th, the letter, they said it would be my aid, will file motions to withdraw from the case. The letter said the village risked not being able to find legal representation due to the high exposure of liability in some cases. Oh, man, this is really, this is really, really crazy, you know. So she's trying to tell these people, no, you can't bring these people in. They're outside. Ch chanting hey hey ho ho she's got to go I mean, there was something i wanted to talk about uh maybe we'll talk about let's see let's 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 talk about this and i want to talk about the police uh, tiffany henyard tiffany henyard uh booed by dalton residents at village board meeting amid fbi investigation a village board meeting was held in, in Dalton on Monday night, marking the first meeting since the FBI delivered subpoenas named Henyard. Outside, uh, they were eager to, to, to address her. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to read all this all over again. <laughs> you're going to be, it's unfortunate, in a six by eight cell in North Carolina because you're going to the federal joint, another resident said. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. Um... Related, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard named in FBI latest subpoenas. We know that. Thornton Township subpoena Tiffany Henyard's target of criminal investigation. Hmm. Let's, let's read that one. Law firm, reference. we know that. that, that, that. Yeah. Uh, so we got corruption, and then we got, um, let's let's read about this. Thornton, Thornton, oh, this is old. Thornton Township subpoenas revealed Tiffany Henyard's target of criminal investigation. So I want to talk about uh, let's talk about the sexual assault. I don't, you know, the criminal investigation we all know about. Dalton Mayor's former assistant addresses alleged Vegas sexual assault. So she's addressing this. For the first time, the woman at the center of the lawsuit involving Dalton trustee Andrew Holmes and Mayor Tiffany Henyard issued a recorded public video message Monday detailing what she said happened during both, happened both during and after a taxpayer-funded business trip to Las Vegas. For the first time, the woman at the center... Uh, in the video of her pre-taped statement provided to NBC Chicago via a link, Fuena Dukes, the mayor, mayor's former assistant, accused Holmes of having non-consexual sex with her. In the video, Dukes said she is a survivor of sexual assault and that at that time has come to share her story. This has been a long journey for me already. She said in the video, Dukes filed a civil lawsuit against Holmes and Henyards, accusing Holmes of assault and Henyard of retaliation. I'm fighting for everyone that has, that has been in my position, she said in a pre-taped video provided to NBC Chicago. I'm fighting for a sister that doesn't have a voice. 
The incident alleged May 24, 2023, during an economic development trip to Las Vegas that's now under federal investigation. Attending that trip were Henyard, a handful of village and Thornton Township representatives and homes who's, who Dukes called Uncle Drew. God, dog. He made everyone feel comfortable, Duke said in the Dukes said in the video. I've been I've even been in places by myself with him, and he's never gave me an, an an inkling of he'll harm me. According to the lawsuit, after dinner and walking the Las Vegas strip with Holmes, Duke said she felt disoriented and ultimately blacked out. My last me memory was me walking up in his room, she said. The lawsuit details a conversation between Dukes and Officer Byron M Miles when he returned from Las Vegas. Miles was a member of the mayor's uh, security detail at the time. Miles claimed Holmes told him he had unprotect unprotected sex with Dukes in Las Vegas. The loot also alleges Holmes in a video call to Miles showed Dukes partially undressed in his hotel bed. Miles said, advise Dukes to seek medical care according to the lawsuit. You were the only one who stood up for me and opened your mouth, and I appreciate you for that, Duke said oh, Miles. According to the lawsuit, Duke claimed that she was fired shortly after bringing up the accusation against home to Henyer. Miles was removed from his role in the mayor's security detail and demoted to pat patrol duty. Miles also filed a lawsuit at the Department of Human Rights, and, and the Department of Human Rights launched an investigation. <sighs> The village told NBC Chicago in a statement that it conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations led by an independent third party company. The statement went on to say Officer Miles was interviewed and denied knowing anything about these allegations. It said Dukes refused to cooperate the village's investigation, calling it nothing more than two disgruntled village employees trying to make off a of taxpayer hard earned money. And the village looks to forward to defending these allegations. Holmes did not respond to. Uh, NBC Chicago's repeated request for comment. Duke said she started a foundation to support women. If you're a victim, find a way to contact me or my people. She said, we are going to help you because you need a voice. And if you don't have one, I will be one. I will be. Dalton trustees, Lori, Dalton trustees hired Lori Lightfoot, uh, the former uh, federal prosecutor, to lead an investigation into Mayor Henyard. So I'm sure they're going to investigate this um, you know, the allegation, whatever allegations are going on with the whole Vegas trip, all this kind of stuff. Where the, where, where the money at? Where, where's the money at? So I want to talk a little bit about, about these other trustees. You know, the, the question all often at, is asked, how does this get so bad? How does this get so far? How do people not step up? How do not people not speak up? So when I teach criminal justice, um, I, in, in particular, when I teach ethics classes, or human behavior classes, whatever, what I'm, I always try to tie it in to, to this type of uh, scenario here. And here's what I always talk about. I talk about two very, very famous court cases, not court cases, but uh, psychological investigation, psychological research uh, projects. One was the Stanford prison uh, experiment. And the other one that I talk about is, is the um, Stanford prison experiment and the Stanley Milgram experiment. I think Stanley Milgram was late 60s. Stanford was early 70s. You guys can Google this. I'm not. I'm just going to talk about it from, from memory. I'm not going to. You guys can, can Google it if you're not already familiar. I'm sure if you've taken an intro to psychology course, you may have studied this before. So anyway, so so the first experiment, that, let's talk about Stanley Milgram experiment. Stanley Milgram was a researcher conducting research at Yale. I believe it was Yale University. I'm almost certain it was, it was Yale University. And uh, so what he did was um, it was an experiment trying to trying to understand how far people would go when an authority figure was telling them to do something. So he had um, persons who were in on the research project put on white lab coats to simulate, you know, authority figures or doctors. And the other experimenters, uh, people who were not, they were part of the invest, uh, part of the experiment, but they didn't understand the, the full extent of everything that was going on, right? They were people, volunteers who had come in. So the volunteers were listening to, um, they were being asked questions and whatever the, if the questions were right or wrong, uh, there was a, a shock that was administered, a shock in quotations that was administered to people that they could not see, but only hear. And they would hear them crying and screaming uh, from, from the administration of the shock. And so the people would begin to get convicted, like, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to keep pushing the button to shock these people. But the authority figure kept telling them to go on. Don't worry about it. It's okay. 
just keep going. Just keep going. And I, the exact number eludes me, but it's something like 60 to 70% of, of the persons who were involved would keep pressing the button because of the, because an authority figure was going, was telling them to do this. And I always brought that up as a police officer because I wanted the, I wanted the people to know that no matter what people are telling you, uh, whether it's a supervisor, a senior officer, if you, you have to be one of the 30% or whatever it was, that'll say, no, I'm not going to go any further. I'm not going to violate anybody's rights. I'm not going to whatever, whatever, you know, people are blaming police for doing, but, you know, ex excessive force, planting drugs or evidence or anything like that. Um, and people do it because they want to get promotions. They want to move up the ranks. They want to get special assignments, special treatment. Uh, they want to get brown nose, brown favor. They want to fit in all this type of stuff. So that's the white coat. That's the white coat effect, right? Essentially, uh, that I would always talk about. That's the Stanley Milgram experiment, or or AKA what we what we term now the Stanley Milgram experiment. The other experiment is the is the Stanford Prison experiment. Stanford Prison experiment uh, took college kids. Half of them they made prisoners. Uh, and the other half, they made corrections officers, regular people, right? At, the, at Stanford University, took them off the street, performed uh, fake arrests, booking processes, procedures, built a little place for them to go. And again, half of the people, uh, the participants would become um, part, um, act as prisoners. And the other half would act as, uh, as the correctional officers. And what they found was that the correction officers, when given this power and authority, those who were acting as correction officers, right? Remember, these are just, they're just actors, 20 something year old kids who are college students. But when they given this, uh, this power and authority, uh, they, they, they acted brutally towards these people, right? They, they had nightclubs and they had uh, the mirrored glasses and they were able to think up new ways of punishing people. They took beds away from people. They took, uh, you know, uh, bathroom privileges away from people and the experiment was supposed to last for like two weeks and it ended up only lasting maybe four five six days or something like that they had to end it early because those who were prisoners began to you know have mental and nervous breakdowns right they're crying they're, they're, they wouldn't come out of their cells you know just just doing all these different types of um cycle their, their psychological response was just crazy so look up those two, two experiments that's a really really brief uh detailed uh brief uh, detail as to what these two experiments and the reason I talk about those two experiments is because I really want my the officers in particular for the Stanley Milgram uh, for the uh, Stanford prison experiment is because I wanted people to understand uh, I wanted the officers to understand you know what's going on uh, you know psychologically when you get this type of power right don't let it go to your head you have power over people's lives you can they want to use the bathroom they want to um, uh, you know, make phone calls. They want to, you know, whatever it is they want to do, don't become abusive with that type of power. So that's why I talked about those, those two types of experiments. So I said it to say that I think that this is interesting, the phenomenon that's going on uh, with these, with these officers who are participating in, and not just the officers, but those uh, board members who might agree and those people, those employees who might agree with Ms. Tiffany Henyard. And we don't know everything. We can't convict her based on these different stories that are coming out. It could be that she's completely uh, exonerated and completely right about what, what she's doing and how she is behaving as the mayor and as the town supervisor there or the village supervisor. It could be we, we have to be able to accept that everything she's done has, has truly been above board. But the other side is, let's just say that, let's just say that she is guilty. Everything she's done has completely been corrupt and she has lied on, on television interviews and all this type of stuff. She ends up getting prison time. Look at the people who are her aides, who are, who have uh, co-signed what she's done. Though. And what they'll say is somebody made me do it, right? They'll blame it on her or I didn't want to go against her. I thought she was doing right, right? It's, it's, you, you know, it's, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be almost like the, the Nazi trials and the Nuremberg defense all over again, right? And, 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 uh, and all that, right? It'll be all that all over again. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how these people, if she's found guilty and if other people in her, in her orbit are found guilty, what they say in five or 10 years, what stories they will tell uh, about her intimidation tactics. They didn't want to get fired. They didn't want to be uh, the subject of police 
um, uh, the, the attack dogs, the police officers being sicked on her. Uh, this could be this this really I know it's about Tiffany Henyard, but I want to point to the to the orbiters around her who really could and should be speaking up if these things are are true. Think about the think about the 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 lesson, uh, the message that is being sent to that officer Miles there uh, who spoke up. He was kicked out for speaking up. He and he did the right thing. He told the woman to go get medical treatment and then brought it to his supervisors and brought it to the people uh, who were supposed to help if we can believe the stories and if all that is true then his uh you know the, what message that it does that send his demotion being kicked off uh, out of the security team he's not able to travel anymore not getting the money and the overtime right the perks and benefits uh, of of those of those of her uh being in her entourage Think about the lesson and think about how hard other individuals f will, number one, fight to get into that entourage, and number two, fight to stay in it. Um, so it'll be very, very interesting to see how the rest of this plays out. So that's my little two cents about Miss um, Miss uh, Super Mayor uh, Tiffany Henyard and her orbiters uh, who got going on around her. I, I hope that everything works out. Uh, for everyone involved, I hope that the young lady, if if her accusations are true, that she gets the psychological and mental help that she needs in order to continue to to go. I hope that she speaks up for all those who are afraid to speak up. I th hope the police officer, if all this is found to be true, that he gets the justification that he needs. I hope that it serves as a lesson to other in individuals out there to not always co-sign what your boss is going, what your boss is saying, or the authority figure who's telling you to keep going, even though you know what what is being done is wrong. You know, in that stand in the Stanley Milgram experiment, they knew what they were doing was wrong, but they did it anyway. Um, and, but be, and they did it because an authority figure was telling them to do it. In the Stanford Prison Experiment, these regular college kids who had no psychological bent towards hurting other individuals still turned into these psychopaths because they were addicted to power. So think about that. And I hope that uh, I said something that resonates. So much love and peace, everyone. Um, I think I want to do is talk about Harvey Weinstein next video. <laughs> Take care. Hit that rate, subscribe and share button.